initially, if you don't get in their way, then and you have great actors, they're going to surprise you. And that surprise is uh, may not be what you thought it should be, should be, and maybe much better. Jules is really quite the beautiful little movie. It's quite the charming character drama with a little bit of a twist in there. Um, what about Gavin's script caught your attention and how did you even come across the script in the first place? Uh, it was sent to me by uh, producers, uh, Debbie Liebling and Andy Daly, uh, who had developed it for a couple of years, Grant. And uh, I, when I read it, I went like, wow, all of those different elements in one package is so unusual. Uh, it's got a, a, a bit of a 1950s sci-fi uh, feel to it. It's got uh, it's got a story which has a lot of heart and pathos about a guy who's uh, beginning to lose some of his faculties. It's got a buddy element, and we have three folks that are finding friendship later in life. Uh, it's got uh, it's got wild humor and crazy inventiveness, uh, and it's got a four foot eleven inch alien. And so those things don't usually go together. And when I read it, I said, OK, you're not going to find two other movies like this in the next five years. This is one of a kind. It really is. I mean, it totally like you say, it feels just like a normal grounded drama. But then when you throw the alien in there, it still somehow fits just right. Uh, it, it's really great. Uh, and I love that you mentioned the 1950s sci fi nature to it, because I was curious how the design of the alien came about. Was that something in the script? Was that something that you felt you wanted to go for in designing jewels? How did that come about? Yeah, Grant, I, 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 it's something I wanted. Uh, I could have done it CGI. We could have done it with all those effects. I mean, there are a few effects in it, but not a lot. And I just didn't feel like that's what the movie was about. It was about the interpersonal relationships of these people and how they, the, this, four foot 11 inch alien helps them to find connection. And for me, uh, that's not a big uh, CGI thing. Also, if you do CGI, then the actor is acting against a stick with a ball on the top of it. And that's what Sir Ben said, Ben Kingsley said to me when we first read it, he said, oh, I hope I won't be acting against a stick. And so the whole idea that we had a real person in the costume and you had a very practical ship in the backyard gave something tangible to ground the film. And so that was just the vision I had from the beginning. Now, with a movie like this, in which it is sort of a, a moderately budgeted movie, I mean, did that provide any practical challenges in, in, you know, suiting someone up as a little gray man every day, as well as having that ship in the background? Yeah, I mean, the practical challenges are it's it's practical and human challenges. The the practical is you how the, how the hell do you put together a spaceship in somebody's backyard and then move it 60 miles to another location, which is what we had to do, or I don't know, 40 miles to another location. We had to take it apart in eight pieces and reassemble it. And even in the backyard, when it moves from one location to another, we had to pick it up, take it, take it apart reassemble it in the backyard and then in the in, in the effects they make the movement uh happen but we had to move it from one location to another so it's beyond me how somebody can do all that but thank god we had a good great production designer so there's that's the sort of practical challenges of it uh the human challenge is that you had uh, a woman, Jade Kwan, playing the alien. And it would take her sometimes four to five hours a day to put that costume on. And then she had to go to work and then an hour and a quarter to take it off again. So, and she had to perform, right? So the work just begins after she's got the costume on. And so that's the human cost. And she was amazing because she said in every scene, I want to be fully present and it enables the other actors to really have somebody to play off of. Well, she does an incredible job because I mean, the there's so much soul just in her eyes alone that really brings that character to life and makes those scenes so memorable. Um, and since you mentioned Ben, I mean, uh, this is a movie that really does 
need a phenomenal cast to to carry this story uh, throughout. And I'm so I'm curious to hear about the casting process and how you went about finding just the right people for each role. I immediately thought of Sir Ben, uh, as as he is called. Uh, and within five days, uh, all of the key cast said yes which never happens. I mean, it's rare that that happens, but they all read it and had the same response to the screenplay I did, which is I, I need to be in this. I need to be part of this. Uh, and so we were quite fortunate to get the people that we wanted. And then it's a matter of blending and not just those three key, but also you have Zoe Winters and you have Jade Kwan. You have these other characters that are critical to the movie. Uh, and all of them signed on very quickly. Uh, And the key is to try to get a mixture because uh, Jane Curtin brings an element to the story, which, you know, I see you smiling immediately. You think of her and you smile Uh, and you can't help it because she's it's funny. She's funny, but she's also got a certain uh, edge, which the film needs uh, to balance uh, Sir Ben and Harriet Harris and it creates a nice balance in the movie. So that's all part of the magic of having great actors. Well, you're right, Jane. I, I love her and everything I see her in. And as soon as I saw her in this, I was like, right. I think she's going to be great with what she does. Uh, yeah. But a lot of this movie, too, requires a lot of vulnerability uh, from your actors and, and going to a lot of very emotional places as they have almost one-sided conversations with Jules throughout the movie. And I'm curious how you as a director go about fostering, you know, that trust with your actors to allow themselves to go to those vulnerable places. Yeah, it's a great question, Grant. You know, I think the starting off point is when you work with great actors, you, you get out of their way uh, and they, then they can, they can bring in what they're going to bring in. So I try not to rehearse. Sometimes an actor will say, oh, I really want to walk through this scene or I really want to try rehearsing this and then we'll do it. But normally we'll just talk about a scene, talk about where they're going to be physically in the scene and then let them go. Uh, And you can always later on adjust. You can always later on have a conversation about how about if we try it this way or that way. But initially, if you don't get in their way, then and you have great actors, they're going to surprise you. And that surprise is uh, may not be what you thought it should be, should be, and maybe much better. Now, is there a, a moment that you can think of that's in the final cut of this movie in which one or multiple actors did bring something that maybe wasn't on the page that just wowed you as you sat back? Every day. <laughs> I mean, it every literally every day. Uh, I, there's a famous director who I won't name who says every time I cast uh, an actor, it's like a little death. And what he means by saying that is I know how this scene should play. I know how these words should be said. And if they don't say it exactly that way, it's going to be like a little death. It's not going to be my vision. And that takes the life out of it. Uh, it takes surprise out of it. It takes the unexpectedness out of it. And so, yeah, there is moments in every scene where an actor will do something, say something, use an inflection, move in a way that you could never have envisioned. And that's really part of the wonder, the magic of making a movie. Harriet Hansom sitting on the car- couch and going, it's an alien from another it's from another galaxy and she moves her hands like that you go like i would never have thought of that and yet it's perfect it really is it, and like you say it 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 shows how well the casting that you've done on this movie is um now was there any one scene in particular in which you were really excited to get to bring your vision to it as well as get to see what uh your actor would bring to that scene no i don't know that there was any one scene and there were several scenes where i had great ideas that didn't make it into the movie i thought they were great ideas uh and that's what happens uh you know you see you know, you have one idea when you read a screenplay you have another movie that you make as you know when you make the movie and then you have the third when it's edited and in the editing room i discovered that there were some things which i thought were so great that really didn't quite fit in the tone of the movie or in the pacing of the movie. And those you just have to let go of. 
so uh, I wouldn't say there was any one scene that I was um, that I was ex- expecting to to be great, but uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised throughout the movie. Well, I'm glad you had such a positive experience with it. And I really can't wait for people to have a positive experience with it as well. And uh, before I let you go, I am curious, you know, what are you hoping in the lead up to the release that people can take away uh, from this this journey? Well, first of all, Grant, thank you for getting on with me. And it's so important on these independent films, especially during the strike now. Uh, It's so critical because our actors can't go out and get on the morning shows and promote the film. And Sir Ben loves the movie. The cast love the movie. They can't promote it. So word of mouth, what you're doing and word of mouth is so important. If people like the movie, please spread the word. Um, And I think what you take away from the movie is that it's heartfelt. And you've said that it's a story about people finding meaning and connection later in life. Uh, And that, to me, is really hopeful. And yet it's done in a package which has wild inventiveness and humor. And we don't usually see those things together. So hopefully that comes through. I had the opportunity to to talk with Sir Ben before the strikes happened about this movie. And it was uh, something that I could tell, like you say, he's really passionate about it. And uh, I so I look forward to between you and him spreading the word as much as possible about this movie uh oh, great. making sure thank people you. see it so mark thank you so much for taking the time i really do appreciate it Grant, thank you appreciate it absolutely have a good rest of your week you too